So this is a little bit of a non-scientific secret, but I like to use um, the butter wrappers to grease the pan because there's still a lot of good butter on those wrappers and we want to use as much as we can without wasting. So we grease up the two pans and then we'll dust it with flour. Boy, this looks incredibly fluffy. I am so excited to eat this. Now this batter is a little thicker than, um, than some batters um, and it won't, it doesn't pour directly into the cake pan, but that's all right. You could just use a rubber spatula to smooth it out and make it look nice and pretty. And now we're going to be putting the two cakes into the oven for about 18 to 20 minutes. We're going to be setting our timer for about 20 minutes. Pretty good. Okay, as soon as the cakes come out of the oven, you gotta drop them. I'll explain later. Ready? And the second one. There you go. What was that? <laughs> Let me explain. As you can see behind me, there's a diagram that explains what happens if you do drop the cake and if you don't drop the cake. You see, when the cake is in the oven, steam is created from the carbon dioxide. When the cake comes out of the oven, the bubbles of the sponge cake are filled with hot steam. What happens if you don't drop the cake is the steam inside the bubbles will condense. And what happens is the bubbles get smaller and the cake collapses because it doesn't have anything to support itself. But if you drop the cake, a shockwave is sent from the bottom to the top of the cake and it breaks some of the walls of the bubbles and allows air to flow in and support the cake and keep it light and moist. I see. Amazing. <laughs> well, now that we've dropped the cakes, we're going to let them sit and cool for about 20 minutes or half an hour um, before we take them out of the cake pan. So now, the next step is going to be making the custard. So the ingredients for the custard will be two cups of milk, a teaspoon of vanilla, two tablespoons of butter, a third cup of cornstarch, three eggs, and one fourth cup of sugar, and one third cup of sugar. Okay, so for this step, we are going to make the egg mixture of the custard. So we are going to have two egg yolks and one full egg. So now I'm going to separate the eggs. And I can see while separating it that it's nice and clean and there are no blood spots. So we separate the eggs because for this recipe we need two egg yolks and one full egg. The reason for that is a lot of the protein is in the egg yolk and custard is all about the protein of the eggs. And we whisk those together. Okay. Next, we are going to stir together the one third cup of sugar with the one third cup cornstarch. So now we're going to pour the sugar cornstarch mi mixture into the eggs and whisk that together. The purpose of cornstarch is to um, thicken things and custard, the whole point of custard is you want it to be thick and creamy and 
Next, we'll make a milk and sugar mixture that we'll bring to a boil, and then we'll mix these two together. So now, the first thing we're going to do is to pour the milk into the saucepan before we put it onto the heat. And then we are going to add one fourth cup of sugar and stir that together. So now we're going to move the milk over to the stove so that we can bring it to a boil. So now the milk has come to a boil. You can see the bubbles of air escaping from the top. And we're going to scoop a little bit of it out. And bring it over to our egg mixture. Now we're going to pour the hot milk into the egg mixture very slowly so that nothing cooks too quickly. And then we bring the egg mixture and we put it back into the milk. And the reason we do that instead of uh, just putting the egg mixture into the milk is to raise the temperature of the eggs so that they don't cook instantly if we were to put them into the heat boiling milk. Um, if they were to cook instantly, we would have soggy scrambled eggs. And to prevent that, we raise the temperature of the egg mixture and then we put it back into the milk so that it creates a smooth, consistent heating and denaturing of the egg proteins. And now we can bring it over and pour it into our milk mixture. And now you can see it's that nice cream color of custard that we were looking for. At this point, you want to be sure to constantly, constantly stir it so that no lumps form because it's going to cook really quickly and you don't want your custard to have any lumps. Oh, look, it's so yummy.